Welcome back to my garage. Last week was amputated by helping out the electrician, fixing all the stuff in the house here, the death trap. This week has been amputated by the mill. I got and soldered in the new transformer from uh, Jim Luck at Sprint Electric. Thank you, Jim. And Sprint Electric. Card is working or was working, but still problems. Spent two nights and a full day troubleshooting and finally resolving the issue. Did take some footage, but it's not that interesting watching a guy scratching his head and walking around and <laughs> not figuring out what's going on. That's two nights and half of this day worth in troubleshooting and it turns out it's the PWM frequency that was too low. <laughs> this erratic behavior of the motor had me pulling everything apart. The spindle, I re-greased the bearings which is good and uh, I'm, I'm glad I did because they were kind of dry but um, all this troubleshooting and it turns out it's the PWM signal. I've come to realize that the, the spindle control in Mach 3 does not really work at all, the speed controllers. Now I've installed a putt here and that controls the speed. So I'll set that to whatever speed I want. Not automatic like I wanted it to be, but uh, it works just fine. And I'm always here supervising anyway. Yeah. Great start, I'm spinning the spindle backwards. <laughs> Fuck. Jack shaft bearing block and jack shaft is done. Now I need to buy or machine some pulleys. I was thinking to go with timing belts because they don't slip. There's teeth there. I need to find a size that can withstand in excess of 20,000 RPM and uh, 10, 15 Newton meters force. Someone suggested on Instagram that I should use the multiple V belts instead and that they won't slip if tensioned and uh, and with the right pulleys and that would be much easier to machine just in, on the lathe here. Shipping is terrible these days. If you saw that community post 
the pip cylinder is sent out to Blixens Racing. Thank you, Blixens Racing. And they're welding in a bridge and replating it. So no need for a sleeve. And uh, but unfortunately, the Norwegian, the Posten, Norwegian Mail Service, has misplaced my uh, my cylinder. So I uh, I sent it off on Friday and no tracking. And I contacted them yesterday and then today, and uh, they're looking for it. So a week now. Tomorrow and uh, it's gone and haven't gone anywhere. Great. Shipping these days is terrible and uh, the best would be to machine some pulleys and not have to wait for them. Now I'll have to wait for the cylinder anyway, so uh, I've, I can't really use the dyno. Yeah, I've ordered some normal pistons and there's no reason this engine won't start and run now. Because now everything's kind of normal. And then we can start experimenting with the methanol and nitromethane secondary intake injection system and uh, yeah. Alongside this, we will be developing and testing a new concept engine with a blower and an, and a rotary exhaust valve. So I'll bring you inside and show you the latest iteration. And uh, I think I've made it machinable in my mill here. Maybe except for the sleeve. In the previous video, you saw the prototype engine with a blower and a rotary exhaust valve, a disc valve, four symmetric exhaust ducts and four symmetric transfer ducts. So here are the exhaust ducts and ports and in here are the transfer ducts. What I think might become a problem with a design like this is too much mixing of spent and uh, fresh gases. So because the ports are like intertwined here. So new design and this one I've made machinable in my three axis mill. Quick introduction, still a rotary disc valve on the exhaust port, but now there's two intakes with reed valves and a plenum outside the engine. The blower will be connected to that plenum. Here's a cross section of the new setup. There's two intakes with the uh, reed valves. And they're facing straight at each other in the rear half of the cylinder and upwards, 30 degrees upwards. It's uh, easier to see that in the, in the top part here. They're aimed up and straight at each other. And I think this might have a much better chance of scavenging and um, the, the rear part of the cylinder and not mixing so much with the exhaust gases. So single exhaust port, 90 degrees from the intakes. And uh, as you can see, these pieces are crude, crude as hell, but they're made to be machinable in my three axis mill. There's holes for dowel pins here to, to register the parts together. You can see now the exhaust ports are a slight bit higher than the transfers. There's 10 degrees difference there. So, uh, so the exhaust has 10 degrees of blowdown. And uh, that's to relieve a little bit of pressure and hopefully initiate kind of a flow vector out the exhaust and not into the transfers. Even though the reed valves are there to, to block any backflow. Same concept as last time. The blower will be feeding Feeding the intakes and there's a rotary exhaust valve. We'll close the exhaust on the upstroke and take advantage of the high transfers to fill the cylinder much better than what a conventional two-stroke can. The valve will be fully open when the exhaust port opens and not close until after bottom dead center or maybe at bottom dead center. That way it won't ever encounter exhaust gases directly and I think it has a fair chance of, um, of, of surviving. Will be a steel valve I think is a wise choice. You should go back and watch that previous video, explain the concept much better there. I haven't decided on a reed valve yet, and you can see the holes here are um, kind of weird. But uh, I'll make the holes fit the reed valves I, I decide to go for. So I'll have to look for, um, look for some suitable reed valves and then finish this and machine it. Thanks for watching, let's hope they find my cylinder and uh, get it shipped to Blixens Racing for, uh, for welding and uh, replating. And uh, we should have a running engine very soon now. And then this prototype. Thanks for watching.